Hey, welcome back to the free game show here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. And of course, this is normally the time that we do Sean talking here, Bill Land, but it's real admirable of you tonight to fill in for Sean because it seems as though these back-to-back -back triple overtime ball games has taken its toll on our superstar color analyst. His voice is not exactly up to snuff at this well, point. We hope it hangs out for the course of the game, but Sean missing an action for the pregame show at least. One of them. Well, this is a big ball game tonight. You know, the big four aren't going to be here, so you can say that the JV might be getting a chance to show what they can do tonight. And now all of a sudden, Bill, all of these games become really, really important for the Spurs. Yeah, we're only 27 games into the season, but as you see, the elite teams in the West are really, really good this year, and the Spurs have dug themselves in the early hole. Yeah. Folks, welcome to the World Car Halftime Report here at the AAC in Dallas. And I don't know what's more impressive for the San Antonio Spurs. The fact that they scored 47 points against the Dallas Mavericks tonight with the JV in there, or the fact that they held Dallas to just 42 points. And remember, this is the highest scoring team in the entire NBA. So Spurs a lot to be proud of here through two quarters of work. As we take a look at our Express News halftime stats, really for Dallas, their three-point shooting is effectively keeping them in this ball game right now. They made five out of six. And then field goal percentage, you see the Spurs are doing a tremendous job on defense, holding them under 40%. Spurs were shooting 50% in this game after one quarter of work and really got off quickly to start the second quarter. Pulled off a little bit shooting-wise, but hey, can't argue with the results. 47 points right now for the Spurs. Marco Bellinelli leading the way for the Spurs with 14 points. And don't forget about Matt Bonner. Right now, he's got 10 points, hasn't missed a shot yet. All right, he's still more to come here on the CW. We've got the second half of Spurs basketball, not to mention the second half of halftime. And we'll do it all right after this here on the CW35. This guy right here, I don't know what he's doing, but it's impressive. Well, folks, you know, earlier this week on Thursday, the Dallas Mavericks making huge headlines across the NBA when they picked up Rajon Rondo from the Boston Celtics. And I think when everybody saw the point guard comparison tonight, assuming that Tony Parker didn't play, we would expected Mr. Rondo to have his way against the Spurs. But quite frankly, Corey Joseph is the guy holding up his end of the bargain tonight. You look at back at what Corey has done over the last three or four ball games, he's now gone over 100 minutes and still has yet to turn the ball over. And then on the other end of the spectrum, Mr. Rondo has missed both of his field goals and his course turned the ball over three times. But Rondo, for all of his ill will shooting the ball, he's only like a 28% three-point shooter and doesn't do very well from the free throw line, only 61%. This man, the league leader in triple doubles over the last three years in the NBA. All righty, when we come back, it is the second half of Spurs basketball here on the CW. We'll get you back to Sean and Bill right after this. Check in with Chuck McIntyre. See what the coaches are thinking here at the break. Yeah, fellas, got a chance to talk to Jim Boylan coming out of the halftime locker room. And he said, boy, it's hard to find any fault with what we were able to do in the first half, given the circumstances. He said, we controlled the game. We controlled the tempo. Our defense is good. We kept them out of transition. Our zone defense was great. He says, it's really yeah. great to see young guys like Ayers and Kyle Anderson stepping up and playing well, too. He was just yep. really, really thrilled with the all-first half. Yep. yep, halfway.